Merry Christmas. Uh, BJ Beaver here. I'm the worship pastor at Christ Church on the Move, and we're going to take a, a quick moment to share some thoughts as we transition now into a time for communion. Hopefully, you're going to be able to do this at some point with your family, and I want to give you a couple of things to consider. If you would turn in your Bible to Matthew 26, uh, a few verses that we want to read real fast, we'll set the stage and then invite you to consider some things. So Matthew 26, starting in verse 26 says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. I have a cool tradition in my family. My girls have been doing it since they were very little, and I'm sure this won't seem brand spanking new to any of you listening, but every year at Christmas time, it's very common for people expecting a, a visit from a jolly a gentleman in the evening to set out a treat uh, for for the visitor. We have here a glass of milk and some cookies, and and this is something we've been doing their their whole lives, my girls, and maybe you do too. Uh, there's a, a music artist that I am fond of who was just put out a Christmas album, and the title of the album is called Milk and Cook Milk and Cookies, and. Crowder, the artist, was commenting on how he came to this name, and he shared some thoughts, and, and basically the long of it is, is, what kind of absurd arrangement is this? We have the most generous, loving person ever showing up and giving you all of your heart's desires and the wishes that you've dreamed of, and what does he get back from us? A plate of cookies that have been left out, now stale and a glass of milk, probably warmed into tepidness. And he's like, how disgusting is this? Why would you give someone that? And listening to him share some of these things, it, it, it just hit me, it struck me. What we really have here is a very similar arrangement with God, isn't it? We come to this time where we take communion and we have these emblems that remind us of the sacrifice that we just read, his body broken and his blood poured out for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And, and if you think about that exchange, it should blow your mind. It is, it is absolutely staggering to think the gift that God the Father gave to us in sending his son to be putting on flesh on our planet, living among us, suffering and dying on our planet, sacrificing his life, paying the price for our sins, resurrecting to life and defeating the curse of sin and death. And what do we give him back? What does he want from any of us? My life? Uh, Newsflash, current estimates probably put my life at a slightly lower value than a plate of stale cookies and warm milk. This is this is on a scale that is literally the actual inspiration for why the St. Nicholas character did what he did all those years ago. He was generous in giving in response to the gift that God had given us. The son, as a, as a sacrifice on our behalf and the labor of love that his life was to us, it's too good to be true. And he would give us all that gift. And this meager ritual that we have, this communion time, is, is a, a, an actual chance to take a symbol and be reminded and hopefully draw our attention and a, a prayerful response from all of us. Not only respect and admiration, but commitment and sacrifice on our behalf. We need that perspective and we need that shift to happen regularly, much more than once a year, as in the case with Santa. Today, as you interact with the uh, with the emblems, whether it's the, the cup and the juice that we provided in the packets to come home, or 
It's milk and cookies that you want to do with your family. I encourage you to sit, to think, and to talk about for a moment who God is, what he's given, and what this time draws us to be reminded of. Let them strike you as both amazingly insufficient, our offering back, but also beautifully simplistic in the call. This is what he wants from us, our life. Let that take us into a deeper love of Jesus today. Let us give that gift to the Savior, our life. God bless you. Amen.